Hi, I'm Joyce Avila, and today I'm going to answer the question, what is a data cloud? On Valentine's Day 2023, Salesforce renamed their Salesforce Genie CDP product to Salesforce Data Cloud, which sparked some really interesting conversations. I've been asked by quite a few people recently, what is a data cloud? I thought Snowflake was the data cloud. Is Salesforce Genie really a data cloud or did they just rename their CDP product? That's what I'll be explaining in this video. I think it'd be helpful to first take a look at where the term data cloud comes from. I trace the term data cloud to four different origins. A 2009 journal article defined the term data cloud as something which provides data management services, either record-based, column-based, or object-based. Not much of a definition, but it was the first time I found the term being used. The most relevant description of a data cloud comes from Alan Cohen a decade later. In his 2019 Forms article titled, The Data Cloud, Alan described the reasons why we need a data cloud to solve the problem of mass data fragmentation. He went on to describe seven building blocks of the data cloud. If you ask me, Alan deserves credit for coming up with the term and modern definition of the data cloud. If Alan gets credit for coming up with the term data cloud, then without a doubt, Snowflake gets credit for building the first data cloud from the ground up. If you've read Frank Slootman's books about Snowflake, you'll know that Snowflake launched their killer data cloud capabilities in late 2019. Among other things, Snowflake made it possible to scale storage and compute independently and to run concurrent workloads against the same data. And one of the huge differentiators of the Snowflake Data Cloud was its ability to federate data, to make data sharing possible without the need to copy or replicate data. As a side note, when I wrote the Snowflake Definitive Guide that was released last year, I devoted an entire chapter to Snowflake Secure Data Sharing. It's really that important. And I think we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on the things that are possible with data sharing capabilities. Since 2019, a few others have put out their definition of a data cloud. If you look at some of the other cloud providers like Google, Oracle, and AWS, you'll see that their definitions of the data cloud have some commonalities. Most of the data cloud definitions do include in their definition things like unification of data, which sounds a lot like a CDP product. A CDP, your customer data platform, is defined by the CDP Institute as packaged software that creates a persistent, unified customer database that is accessible to other systems. That definition did describe the Salesforce CDP product from the past, but unifying data in a data cloud goes beyond the narrow definition of unifying customer data. In a data cloud, it's possible to unify all types of data. For example, unifying transactional and analytical data like Aurora to Redshift for AWS, Bigtable to BigQuery for GCP, and Unistore for Snowflake. Spoiler alert, Unifying transaction and analytical data is also possible in the new Salesforce Data Cloud. So after taking into account Alan Cohen's Forbes article and what Snowflake built out, as well as the more recent definitions of the Data Cloud by AWS, Oracle, Google, and others, I've come up with a list of five characteristics that I believe describe the modern Data Cloud. Data flexibility, data unification, data accessibility, data portability, and data extensibility. Data flexibility provides the ability to collect, stage, and or store a variety of data types and ingestion patterns from unrelated sources. For data flexibility, one of Snowflake's differentiators is the way in which it handles semi-structured data with the variant data type. And Snowflake fulfills the criteria set forth by Alan Cohen about being able to run apps on the same platform as the data. Data unification supports data aggregations and transformations for unification. It also makes it possible to create a single source of truth. For data unification, one of the new features of Snowflake is its Unistore workload, which makes it possible to unify analytical and transactional data. 
Data accessibility supports elasticity, data democratization, and data sharing capabilities within a cloud-based solution. Snowflake checks this block for sure. Data portability means that there is no vendor lock-in and that a multi-cloud, multi-region strategy is possible. Data extensibility makes it possible to build and share data cloud applications. Just like with data sharing, the importance of data extensibility and the potential for its uses is huge. We've established that Snowflake is a data cloud. So what about Salesforce? Is Salesforce Genie really a data cloud or did Salesforce just rebrand their CDP product as a data cloud? Let's think about it. We know that the Salesforce CDP product was originally built on top of existing Salesforce architecture, which had the more traditional approach of storing data in a transactional database. One of the challenges with that is the difficulty in scaling, especially when you have large amounts of event data. Because Salesforce data was traditionally locked into a transactional system, it required the data to be sent to external systems for processing. When you do that, you lose control of your semantics and you lose the control over the security of your data. With the new Salesforce Data Cloud, there is an all new architecture approach. And very importantly, the new architecture wasn't built in a silo. Instead, all the metadata is in Salesforce Core while the data is stored in the back end. The data ingested into the Data Cloud is not stored transactionally. The Salesforce Data Cloud is built on a lake house, which has been architected to store data in a parquet format within an S3 bucket, on top of which is built Apache Iceberg. Handling streaming event data at scale is now possible. Delta incremental updates are fast. And because Salesforce Genie now includes a data lake house, it means that infinitely more data than before can be brought into Salesforce and with various ingestion patterns, real time, near real time with micro batches, or by using batch ingestion methods. And importantly, Salesforce metadata is added to the lake house. This makes it so that Salesforce data no longer needs to leave the system. Sometimes there is data though that is needed to complete a customer 360 view and it already exists elsewhere in a data warehouse or another data lake outside of Salesforce. It is possible to ingest that external data into the Salesforce Data Cloud lake house. Although not available today, Salesforce is working on creating bi-directional data sharing capabilities with partners such as Snowflake. This Salesforce Data Cloud data will be accessible and available to use within Snowflake and vice versa. No more copies of data need to be made. Similar to what Snowflake has done with its Snowflake Marketplace, Salesforce has an app exchange which extends the power of Salesforce with pre-built applications. There are already many Salesforce Data Cloud applications available today, and I expect that there will be many more coming soon. Salesforce Data Cloud is in production today, but with some exciting new capabilities and features in Pilot. So it is a little too soon to go through a formal evaluation. That said, I think if you look at the characteristics of a modern data cloud, the new Salesforce data cloud may just check all the boxes. What do you think? I'd love to continue the conversation around the question of what is a data cloud? I'd love it if you connect with me on LinkedIn and join me in person at local Snowflake user group events. And if you use Salesforce data cloud today, I'm interested in getting your input. I'll also be needing a few book reviewers for the upcoming O'Reilly book about the Salesforce Data Cloud that I'm working on. Thanks, and I hope to talk to you soon.